Hi, it's Miss Price. And this is Miss Niebling. Today we're going to talk about something called show don't tell. As readers, we know that the best writers are the ones who use great description and details when they're telling their story. Using great description and details is what we call show don't tell, where you are able to actually show details instead of announcing them to the reader. And Mark Twain says it best when he says, don't say the old lady scream, bring her on and let her scream. As we go through this PowerPoint, look at ways to show, don't tell. I hope you can figure out what Mark Twain is actually talking about. So right now we're going to start taking some notes in our spiral. So set your spiral up like you know how to do that for notes. And as we go through the PowerPoint, you are welcome to stop and pause at any time so that you can finish taking notes if necessary. Anything you see on the next two screens needs to be written in your spiral. So let's get started. One way to show, not tell is to talk about characters' actions. Don't make announcements. Don't talk about how the character's feeling. Don't say the character is mad or, or sad or happy. Instead, show us through their actions that they're mad or happy so that the, in the end, the reader can say, wow, that character must have really been mad. One of the great things about being a writer is that you get to choose the words that you use to describe that character. So the verb is a very important part of the sentence. That's the word that's really going to set the tone for that sentence. If you can use a word like walk, that doesn't give very much description for the reader. Choose a word like frolic or scamper. Those are verbs that are going to actually help your reader be able to visualize what's going on in the story. Wow, frolic's a great word, one that we could probably add to our writer's notebook. I think that's a great idea. We also want to make sure we use adjectives. We don't want to use boring little adjectives like big and small and tall. Instead, we want to make things sound interesting. Like something's not small, it could be minuscule. As something can't be tall, maybe use a simile and say it's as tall as the Eiffel Tower. When it comes to books or stories, the setting is really important. That's what helps us to visualize what's going on in the story. The location or the place of the story needs to be described very clearly. Is it morning? Is it night? Is it dark? Is it light? What kind of place are you telling your reader about? The more details you use to describe the setting, the more powerful it's going to be for your reader. Another way is we want to use figurative language. This is a great way to help a reader visualize. One thing about figurative language is that when you use figurative language, you are coming up with an original way to describe something. You're not just saying that her face was red. We've all heard that before. Try to come up with something different, like her face was red as a tomato. That is a simile. That is a type of figurative language. Other types of figurative language that we're going to be studying later this year are metaphors, alliteration, personification, onomatopoeia, hyperbole, and idiom. Make sure you use dialogue. Sometimes when our stories are kind of bland and boring and we look back at them, it's because our characters never talk to each other. And that's not real life. We do lots of talking. So in your stories, make your characters talk to each other. We can learn a lot about a character just through dialogue. Now, when we're thinking about characters in books, remember they're just like people. How do you get to know a person in real life? By learning about what they're thinking and feeling. Use your words to show what your characters in your stories are thinking. That's where the power comes from, to understanding those characters. Oh, the five senses. That's another great way to help a reader visualize. The five senses are something that all humans have in common. Even if a person is not able to hear, they are able to smell, for instance. The more details that you use to describe the five senses, the better you're going to be able to connect with the people that are reading your story. At this point, go ahead and stop taking notes. We're going to show you some examples in the next couple of slides on how to show and not tell. So our first example is, this is a telling sentence. Ingrid was really nervous while giving her speech. It's an announcement. They already tell us that she's nervous. So now we need to think about how to make this sentence uh, a little bit more interesting, a little bit more visual for us. So first, start thinking about actions that show that a person is nervous. I know that when I get nervous, my face gets red, and believe it or not, I actually start to giggle. And sometimes I can control my giggles, and sometimes I can't. And I know that for a fact. And for <laughs> me, when I'm nervous, I talk really fast. So if you think I talk fast now, wait till I get nervous. So think about how do you show you're nervous. Here are some ways our students in the past have sh told us that they show they're nervous. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take these ideas and we're going to turn them into a showing paragraph to show that Ingrid was nervous. As her name was called, Ingrid trudged up in front of her classmates. 
She buried her head behind her paper as her hand shook enough to be measured on the Richter scale. While twisting her hair and gnawing on a fingernail, Ingrid stared at the notes in front of her. After stuttering through the first sentence, her flaming red face peeked out from behind the paper and she instantly dashed out of the classroom. One of the things that I love about this paragraph is all those great verbs. Verbs like trudged, buried, twisting, gnawing, stuttering, peaked, and dashed. Those verbs are very powerful. They're giving us a very clear image in our minds, just like a movie or a TV show, that we're able to visualize what's going on. I can feel like I'm connecting to Ingrid, and I feel awful for how nervous she is. Good point. Now here's another example that's telling. Mavis was angry when she heard what the umpire said. Again, it's just an announcement. We already said she's angry. So now we need to figure out how we can show how angry she is. But remember, you don't always have to write a whole paragraph to show instead of tell. This is still one sentence, but look at how much more visual this sentence is than the previous one. Shaking her head back and forth, Mavis pounded home plate with her fist after the umpire shouted, You're out! Great, and now let's look at another way, an another sentence. The girl cried a lot. This is a typical seventh grade sentence. Cried is such a baby word. And the girl, we don't even know who she is or how old she is. So we need to jazz this up. We need to show instead of tell. What kind of girl? What kind of crying? Here's the first showing example. The teenager threw herself on her bed and sobbed into her pillow until she fell asleep. Now we can visualize this. We know what kind of girl, and we have great imagery like threw herself on her bed and sobbed into her pillow. By changing those verbs and the type of girl, we have a much better picture in our minds. So let's look at another example. Let's change just a few words and see how we can come up with a different image. The toddler bawled uncontrollably when the storekeeper took the display doll out of her hands. And that's great, because not only do we know it's a toddler, but look at the word bald, as well as now we know why she's crying. It's much better visual. The last example that we have says, the princess whimpered into the handkerchief when she realized that she had dropped her ring into the raging river. Look at that verb in the first part, whimpered. That's a certain type of crying. By choosing that verb, we made that imagery and that visual much stronger for our reader. We know who the girl is, how she cried, and we feel sorry for her. We're connecting to her and her problem about losing her ring. All right, now that we looked at examples, it's your turn to try. So underneath your notes, we want you to write this sentence, Miss Price was really mad. Of course, you can make it Miss Neebly was really mad if you'd rather. And you write that sentence, and what we want to do is we want you to think of what are actions or words or visuals that would show that Miss Price or Miss Neebling was really mad. And we want you to brainstorm maybe five or six. Make a brainstorm list. What did she sound like? What did she say? What did she look like? What were her actions? After you brainstorm that list, now you need to write it out like sentences or a small paragraph. Maybe two, three, four sentences. Try and describe this whole process of Miss Price or Miss Neebling was really mad. So pause the uh, video for a few minutes while you finish your brainstorm list in your paragraph and then start back up. All right, we have one more. Let's bring it back to Mark Twain. So instead of saying the old lady screamed, let's bring her on and let her scream. So once again, write down that sentence, the old lady screamed, and then make another brainstorm list of actions that would show that she's screaming. What would she look like? What would she sound like? What would she say? What would it feel like when she's screaming? Try not to use the word scream. Remember, if you describe the screaming, you won't even have to say the word scream. So try and use other words and other ways to show that she screamed instead of just announcing to us that she screamed. When you finish writing your brainstorm list, this time do the same thing. Write a small paragraph that describes this process of the old lady screaming. Remember to show instead of tell. And when you're finished, you're finished with taking notes and practice. We're going to use these examples in class, so make sure you're prepared for class tomorrow so that we can see your show, not tell examples. This has been Miss Niebling and Miss Price. See you later.